Osmoregulation and excretion. Osmoregulation, nature of excretory products, excretory system of man, mechanism of urine formation, role of skin in excretion, role of lungs in excretion. Osmoregulation, the maintenance of an optimal concentration of water and salts in the tissues and body fluids is called as osmoregulation. Hober in 1902 first coined the term osmoregulation. Maintenance of internal osmotic concentration which is different from the surrounding medium. Water regulation and internal ionic concentration helps in homeostasis, constancy of internal environment. Osmoregulation is closely related to pH and temperature regulation. Body fluid concentration should neither be hypertonic nor hypotonic. Various animals show different methods of osmoregulation depending upon the total solute concentration of the surrounding medium in which they live. So, kidneys are for removing excess water and also conservation of water. Thus, osmoregulation and excretion are interlinked. Excretion Separation, collection and elimination of nitrogenous waste products from the body is called excretion. Nature of excretory products the end products of protein digestion are amino acids. Excess of amino acids are converted to ammonia by a process called deamination. In some animals, detoxification of ammonia takes place in the liver and converted into less toxic substances like urea and uric acid in some animals depending upon the availability of water. There are three modes of removing nitrogenous wastes in animals. Ammonotelism, ureotelism and uricotelism. A chart depicting the three modes of removing nitrogenous waste in animals is shown below. This diagram shows the human excretory system. In the diagram you can see the left kidney, right kidney, adrenal gland, ureter, renal vein, renal artery, bladder and the urethra. In the left kidney, the parts of the kidney like pelvis and the medulla are also shown. Excretory system of man Excretory system of mammals consists of kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder and urethra. Kidney Kidneys are a pair of dark red bean shaped organs about 10 cm long, 5 cm wide and 4 cm thick. Kidneys are attached to the dorsal body wall at the level of the 12th thoracic to the 3rd lumbar vertebra in the abdominal cavity. They have peritoneal covering only on the anterior surface. So, they are described as retroperitoneal. The right kidney is slightly lower in position than the left kidney. Each kidney is convex on the lateral margin and medial surface shows a notch called hilus. Blood vessels, nerves and ureters enter and leave the kidney through the hilus. Kidneys are important homeostatic organs as they maintain the physiological balance of the body by performing the following functions. Extraction of nitrogenous waste by ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption and renal secretion. Regulation of pH of body fluids. Regulation of composition of blood with respect to salts and water that is osmoregulation. Ureters. A pair of narrow ducts each coming out of the kidneys through the hilus and running up to the urinary bladder into which they open by a lateral angle. It is about 25 to 30 centimeters long. Function Ureters carry urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder by peristaltic contractions. Urinary bladder It is a pear shaped structure lying in the pelvic cavity. The wall of the urinary bladder consists of non striated or smooth muscles involuntary muscles which allow the bladder to expand at the time of fillings. Hence, the size of bladder varies according to the volume of the urine it contains and also according to the age of the person. It opens into the urethra by the aperture guarded by a sphincter called the urethral sphincter made up of striated that is voluntary muscles. The mean capacity of the bladder in an adult male is 220 ml varying from 120 to 300 ml. Function Temporary storage of urine, 500 to 1000 ml of urine and expels it out at intervals through urethra. This is called urination or micturition. Urethra Urethra is a single median terminal duct extending from the bladder and opening outside by the urethral aperture. Function 
In the male, the urethra is also called as urinogenital duct because it carries urine outside the body during urination and it also carries semen outside the body during copulation. Histology of kidney Each kidney is externally covered by a thin fibrous covering called the renal capsule. The VS of the kidney shows two distinct regions that is the outer firm dark reddish granular region called cortex and the inner lighter and striated region called the medulla. The cortex contains uriniferous tubules or nephrons which manufacture urine. The medulla shows about 10 to 15 conical projections called medullary pyramids which contain collecting and discharging tubules. The base of each pyramid is in contact with the cortex and the narrow tip of the pyramid called renal papilla projects into the inner large space called the pelvis. The latter is the expanded beginning of the ureter and consists of several major cap-like structures called calices. These calices branch out to form smaller ones, each of which fits over the apex or the papilla of a pyramid. Structure of Nephron it is the structural and functional unit of kidney which is also called as the uriniferous tubule. In human, each kidney consists of about 1 million nephrons bound together by the connective tissue. Each nephron is about 3 cm long and 20 to 30 micrometer in diameter. The kidney cannot regenerate new nephrons. Each nephron consists of the Malpighian corpuscle comprising of the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus the renal corpuscle and the renal body. Malpighian corpuscle present only in the cortex of the kidney consists two subparts Bowman's capsule double wall cup outer parietal layer lined by squamous epithelium inner visceral layer lined by porocytes. Porocytes increase the contact of the Bowman's capsule with the glomerulus. The glomerulus Within the cup-shaped space of the Bowman's capsule lies a globular network of capillaries called glomerulus. A thin branch of the renal artery is the afferent arteriole which supplies blood to the glomerulus while slightly thinner efferent arteriole carries blood away from the glomerulus. There is an intimate connection between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. Two together are referred as the renal corpuscle or the Malpighian body. This is a diagram of the renal tubule showing the thin walled descending limb, the proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the collecting duct and the thick walled ascending limb. Renal tubule. It is a long coiled tubular part and consists of the following parts, neck, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule. The renal tubule arises from the base of the woman's capsule. The connection between this is the neck. Just near the neck, the tubule is highly coiled and this region is called proximal convoluted tubule. It shows the brush border formed of microvilli. This leads to a U-shaped region of tubule which enters the medulla region of the kidney. It takes a hairpin turn and returns to the cortex. This middle region of the renal tubule is called loop of Henle. It has two limbs thin walled descending limb, it is long and is lined with flat epithelial cells and the thick walled ascending limb, it is lined with cuboidal epithelium and it is not permeable to water. Henle's loop is mainly meant for concentration of urine. After re-entering the cortex, the renal tubule again gets coiled to form the distal convoluted tubule. It opens into a collecting duct. About 7 to 8 collecting ducts join to form duct of Bellini which opens into the calyx at the apex of the medullary pyramid. These ducts drain all the urine collected from the nephron into the pelvis. The diagrams of human excretory system, LS of kidney, nephron, ultrastructure of nephron and Malpighian body are shown. The circulation of blood within the kidney is heart to the dorsal aorta renal artery arteriole, afferent arteriole, glomerulus, efferent arteriole, peritubular capillary, venule, renal vein, inferior vena cava and heart. Mechanism of urine formation. Urine formation is one of the main functions of the nephrons and it takes place by the following process. Glomerular filtration, ultrafiltration, tubular reabsorption that is selective reabsorption and tubular secretion that is renal secretion. Glomerular filtration that is ultrafiltration. 
It takes place in the Malpighian body. It is a physical process. Glomerulus and Bowman's capsule act as a filtering unit. The diameter of the afferent arteriole is larger than that of the efferent arteriole. Blood enters the glomerulus at a faster rate than it leaves it. As a result, the blood in the glomerulus is always under pressure and this force is called the effective filtration pressure EFP and this results in ultrafiltration that is filtration under pressure. The glomerulus lining is such that it only allows small molecules to filter through like glucose, plasma, ions like sodium and potassium, urea, etc. The larger molecules like blood cells and protein cannot pass through the glomerulus. This is the reason that when there are kidney diseases, the glomerulus lining is affected, due to which the protein molecules also pass through, leading to blood and protein in the urine. Tubular reabsorption, selective reabsorption. Glomerular filtration contains a number of useful substances which the body cannot afford to lose. The filtrate then enters the tubule. The internal lining of the tubule shows microvilli or brush border to increase the area of reabsorption and also densely packed mitochondria to provide energy for active reabsorption. The cells of the tubules show selective reabsorption and they reabsorb only useful substances like glucose, vitamins, amino acids, some salts and requisite quantity of water from the filtrate and put them back into the blood in the surrounding capillaries. Reabsorption occurs in two steps which is active reabsorption which requires energy and passive reabsorption which does not require energy. Thus, whatever useful substances are lost from the plasma through Bowman's capsule by ultrafiltration are regained by the blood through the cells of tubules during reabsorption. Low threshold substances like uric acid and urea are reabsorbed negligibly. Blood enters the Malpighian body. Important nutrients are passively transported back into the blood. This is ultrafiltration. Sodium chloride nutrients are absorbed by the tubule cell lining and actively transported back into the blood and thus the useful substances are not lost by the body. Substances like ammonia, urea, potassium, hydrogen ions and creatinine harmful to the body are discharged out of the body. Tubular secretion that is renal secretion. The tubular secretion is mostly the work of distal convoluted tube with the ascending limb of the Henle's loop. Some substances like urea which escape the ultrafiltration in Bowman's capsule pass into the blood capillaries surrounding the tubular region. From this network of blood capillaries, the cells of tubules by active reabsorption absorb the substances like ammonia, urea, potassium, hydrogen ions and creatinine and discharge or secrete them into the filtrate of the tubule. It is thus the reverse of selective reabsorption. The resulting fluid in the tubule forms urine. The distal convoluted tubules then drain the urine into the collecting tubules. Then several collecting tubules join together to drain their contents into the collecting duct which finally after urine formation flows into the ducts of Bellini. This then eventually reaches the renal pelvis from where the urine flows into the ureter to reach the urinary bladder. Role of skin in excretion. Sweat glands secrete water, urea and salts from the skin. Heat is lost from the body and this helps to regulate the body temperature. Role of lungs in excretion. CO2 that is carbon dioxide and water vapor diffuse from the moist alveolar surface of the lungs which are the sole excretory organs for carbon dioxide excretion. Water released from the lungs is a waste product of metabolism and thus excretory.